She's an artist, a children's book author, an illustrator, textile designer, and mother dedicated to keeping the wonder and curiosity in childhood. With clients like, oh, Ralph Lauren, Pop and Lolly, and Better Homes and Gardens, chances are you have seen and appreciated the whimsical artwork of Sarah Jane. Some describe her style as vintage. Some say it has European flair. Sarah says her style stems to her own carefree growing up and a desire to keep the magic in childhood. How does her vision, though, translate to real-life moments and day-to-day -day parenting? We are so pleased to welcome Sarah Jane Wright to Studio 5 today, along with her husband, Kenneth. It's so great to see you, to catch up. Hi. It's great to meet you. We're just thrilled to have you both. Thank and we you. can't wait to tap into your vision here, how you extend your passion, right, and cultivate curiosity on the home front. But Sarah, I have to ask, because you pitched bringing Kenneth along with you today, mm. yes. why the tag team? Well, for so long, I've created illustrations and art that really promote this idea of magical childhood, wonder in childhood. But the reality is, as a family, we're creating a culture, and mm -hmm. we decided, early on that we had to create this culture of curiosity in our home and that's that's together it's tag team that's a team we yeah. also decided to write a book about which we'll talk about later and mm -hmm. we did that together so he's here I love mm -hmm. that you share that passion for mm -hmm. creativity for curiosity but set the ground rules for us when mm -hmm. it comes to mom and dad promoting that creativity what do we need to know I think a lot of parents get scared uh, to try to do creative things because they uh, they think it's going to be messy or it's going to be too problematic or it's going to get out of control and there is a certain level of mess but what we've looked for is what are things that you can give your children to do where they can be self-directed they can be autonomous and they can have that creative outlook without destroying your house there's a way to do it because every, everybody's busy yes bless you yeah. for that and we were chatting during the commercial mm -hmm. break sometimes the projects you see online are like 80 percent parent work and 20 yes. percent child effort and you want to kind of flip that ratio and they do something for five minutes and then they walk off exactly. and you're like i spent six hours at michael's buying all of this and <laughs> now it's what yes. do I do now yes uh, so we've a lot of trial and error but we just wanted to share a couple of things we found where you can promote that curiosity creativity in the home without losing your mind I previewed so. these ideas I love these ideas I'm such a fan of both of you mm -hmm. let's jump in reading what does reading look like mm -hmm. reading time in your home so we have found that really if you can get a kid excited about reading there's just there's so many things that they can jump off from, from that point point. and we have had in our family kids that love reading kids that don't love reading so creating a culture where books are exposed books are out we have a basket for just library books we have a color-coded bookcase we have books in the kids room and really having books accessible gets the children involved. And so they're sprinkled around your home. Sprinkled. They're everywhere. But just soft, cozy nooks where they can curl up and read and just finding books that they love. For example, our, our daughter reads voraciously, but our son was really reluctant. But we finally just found what he was into, what he was obsessed with, and he actually just finished a book series last night and he was practically in tears because it was over. And oh, no. Be gone. <laughs> but it's okay. He's converted now. But yeah, it's he's just, in. You have to find what they're passionate and about. And also, reading aloud, I was just, just going to jump in. Sometimes children need higher level content, but they're not able to read it yet and so we have found that reading aloud even the more accelerated books or advanced books for younger kids is really great and I have a segment on my website where we have a list of over 100 books that maybe a six-year-old could read that um, we could read aloud to them and that's going to encourage them to get more into books get more into curiosity and and for us, it's the bedtime routine. It's sure. always before Sure. Bedtime. That's a huge oh. passion of mine as well. I share mm -hmm. that with you. And I, I drag my feet. I dread the day when my little girl grows up. But the idea of reading mm -hmm. chapter books aloud yep. is, like, honestly an exciting point yeah, to me. Yeah, still it really is. We have a 13-year-old, and we still read aloud. Okay, so good. It's okay. okay, good. You've calmed my mother heart. <laughs> Let's move on to this next category. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. so curious to see a typewriter here. We know technology is real. That pull to the gadgets, the screen yes. time. Sure. That's intense right now for kids of this generation. Where does the typewriter come into play? So we found this typewriter on KSL, of all things, on classifieds our daughter wanted a typewriter for Christmas and we hunted but guess what we got her one but what we didn't realize is how much it was going to promote writing and storytelling the kids even text back and forth to each other on the typewriter you're kidding and we have yeah. it in the main room and the children will actually just type sentences and leave randomly for that us in is the house. charming and so sweet so it's encouraging writing without it being behind a screen that has to adapt to a printer this is just right there well and it's not a child at a kitchen table being forced to write sentences or stories and or it whatever makes noise. it is but bing, 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 bing. But it was her idea and she wanted it and so as a parent it's like okay this is something that you encourage and you just let them go with it and when they find those little things maybe it's something else in this case it was a typewriter so yeah. we got her a typewriter 40 bucks on KSL well and there's a thread your son wanted a certain reading mm -hmm. series your daughter wanted a typewriter go with them down Follow that way of interest. creativity do you let your kids paint you mentioned the mess yes are we pulling out the paints at the right house regularly we do paint I always put a covering down usually <laughs> there's paints all over the place but there's a couple <laughs> ways that if you're super busy and you don't have time to clean up uh, there's a, a backup plan that What's we have that? With it, over here we love our kids do carving. My, my son, he's four, wanted to do a wood carving, and I'm not about to hand a four-year-old a knife. So my dad used to just hand us a block of soap and a butter knife, and so they'll carve their own tub toys. 
This so they'll go so ahead and they'll fun. carve fish and they'll carve all sorts of things and it's easy to clean up. But other thing is just shaving cream. We'll just spray it on the counter or put it on a cookie sheet. I'll even spray it on the window. We have a big you know, sliding glass door in the kitchen. You spray it on and it's like finger paint, but when they're done, it just wipes right off. And you'll start with the four-year-old, but then the eight-year-old will jump in and sure. then next thing you know, the 13-year-old's all over it. And then the windows are clean when you're and done. And then Sarah Jane's going crazy on every window in the house, right? right. Yeah. But no, stain, yes. no stains, no color dye, no paint on the floor. Wipe it right up, keep it in a cookie sheet, and you're... Good to go. But it's all it. the fun of painting with none of the mess. So, I love yeah. it. Bless you both. That moms everywhere are cheering and mm. saying, thank you, thank you. Gracias, gracias. Yeah. All right, what about the craft room? How are you pulling kids into your craft corner? So we have a lot of different things, obviously, with my work, my line mm -hmm. of work. We have fabric, we have embroidery. And one thing that we've really discovered is the magic of paper puppets. Now, this might sound kind of bizarre, but these paper puppets are the kinds of toys that kids can play with and they're articulated, so they're gonna move around, and what we'll do is we'll just draw these really simple shapes, put arms and legs on them, mm -hmm. and they are able to craft themselves and play, but it's very imaginative, so this is all about storytelling and playing. And I feel like I just learned a new art word, articulate, is that what articulated, you said? Articulated, yes, articulated, articulated limbs. Articulated, poseable, articulated, poseable. thank poseable. you. Yes. That's more on yeah, my level. <laughs> but do you find that that really draws them in more than just a flat make, piece of paper? Yes, we make these on the weekend and literally they will play with them for days on end. It's, I love it. It's one of those things that I never realized, but I'm telling you, it works. At Christmas time we have nutcracker ones and they're all poseable and we play the music and they do, it's great. Sweet, so, so sweet. Building, you encourage building as mm -hmm. well. And this is an avenue I think of creativity that is, un, that is maybe under, under observed, under mm -hmm. recognized, the Legos, just the sure. blocks, that kind of a thing. So we have Legos, everyone has Legos, and we love Legos. They're fantastic. But what's difficult about Legos is sometimes there's little pieces, they get mm -hmm. scattered under the couch. What happens when you're making dinner and you just, the kids want to build and keep creative, but you don't want the mess everywhere. Mm -hmm. We discovered these magnet blocks that my son uses at his Montessori preschool. Okay. And what's so wonderful about these is that they're large shapes, uh -huh. and what they can do is they, they stick right on. Um, you'll see that they'll stick, ooh messed it up yeah. they'll stick together and what happens is it's actually a lot better in is there life. any such thing as messing it up in the world of no. creativity Sarah yeah Jane? you <laughs> can just make a mess but you can also see that what we'll do is we'll put washi tape on the floor uh -huh. and we'll say hey guess what mom has to make dinner go in the family room build your little city oh you kind of box them in with yeah, the washi tape you can just make little roads with washi tape what's wonderful about washi tape or painters tape is that it doesn't leave a residue you can leave it on the hardwood floor or the carpet and it's not going to leave a residue it's not going to leave a mess and they can just play village and play creative architecture without making little pieces scattered they're everywhere. building i-15 along your kitchen floor yeah, with we're, that tape. we're not the kind where we're anti-technology or anything like that but the temptation to just let them sit and veg in front of the tv forever is a little strong right but you still got to get stuff done so sure. you can't be monitoring what they're doing so Things like this creative play, they'll do it for hours, and yeah. it's marvelous. We love it. You've struck a perfect balance here yeah. with these ideas. Really helpful, you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're an inspiring couple for promoting mm -hmm. that creativity inside the home. And now with this latest project that you're coming together mm -hmm. on, I have my Lola Girl pin on. Yay. I'm sporting it in honor of this book release. Tell mm -hmm. us about this project. So Lola Dutch is a dynamic, adventurous, enthusiastic character who very much was inspired by our own childhood, mm -hmm. but also our children. Over the top creative, doesn't want to stop diving in wholeheartedly, yet she has this mentor, Bear, who's a little bit apprehensive of her ideas and is kind of concerned about how much she wants to get into painting and cooking and building. He's trying to tame her, calm He's her down. He's trying to tame yeah. her and calm her down. But what we've noticed as a parent as an, as, and as educators mm -hmm. is that children really, truly need this this ability to dive in wholeheartedly. They need the permission. So we wrote a book Love it. Yeah. called Lola Dutch. This is the first in a picture book series mm -hmm. uh, coming out on January 30th. Congratulations, you Thank guys. You. Tomorrow the big release days. day and a lot of fun mm -hmm. downloads correlating with this story with yeah. this character on your website. Yes, and what's really great about this book is that to perpetuate this idea of creativity, the book itself is creative. And so what we've made is when you take the jacket off, this is actually something that's never been done before. We convinced our publishers to go with it. When you take the jacket off, it actually becomes a dollhouse and you can cut out paper puppets that are on the jacket flap mm -hmm. and have your own creative play after you read the book. Creativity mm -hmm. tucked in every page. I'm mm -hmm. such a fan of your work and now this collaborative project. You guys, thank you so much for the thank preview. You. Thank we you. appreciate it. Look for links to some of the projects we talked about on our website, studio5.ksl.com.